Hello, hello. Okay, so starting on my end a little early, I uh, had a little uh, issue scheduling wise and so jumping in an hour ahead of what I originally thought. But I'm going to now go ahead and try to see if I can connect with my co-host. So what happens when you're working with different time frames and time zones. Let's see if I can figure this out since they changed up live and I realized that last night when I was doing another interview and now I have to figure out how to do the co-hosting. Good luck to me! Let's see if he is on at the moment. He is coming in from I think the UK if I remember correctly where time difference is <sighs> Fun stuff when you're working with people in different time zones. Anywho, how's everyone's day going so far? Mine's been an adventure. Let's see. <laughs> I don't know if I can see him right now. How do... Wait, wait. Let's see if we can figure this out. The fun thing of technology. <laughs> Let's see, why can I not find you? I know you're here. See if that worked. Hello, hello. Yeah, I know. Having issues today, it's kind of hysterical. Let's see. Hmm. Has anybody tried the new invite for hosting recently? It's going to be my end. Let's see. Hey, Neil. It's having issues again like we did last night trying to figure this out. Why? Why is it hard for me? I don't understand. Where? Let's see. Hello, hello. Yeah, I know. It's funny. Why can I not figure this out? I don't remember how we did this. How is this so hard? <laughs> Let's see. I know. Just keep it up. Thank you. Thank you. I'm trying. I'm trying. It's it's a it's a moment. Why can I not pull him up? Hmm. Yes. Here we go. He found me. Hi. <laughs> Sorry about the the delayed interaction. I just, I cannot figure out ever since they kind of have been switching things around how to now send invites out to other co-hosts. Oh, it's, yeah, there's a button in the bottom corner that it, you look, tap co-host, um, co and it'll put anyone that's live on your friends list on there. But I have tried that, and every time it doesn't and show just... my co-host as live, which is interesting, and I don't know why, clearly you are here, so. But it is nice to finally meet you in person. I have yes. been... Uh, just so fascinated with all your TikTok posts and your book covers because I'm obsessed with your book covers. And um, yeah, so I'm so happy we get to do this. I have a question. Yeah, I've been really looking forward to it. The, yeah. uh... Oh, go on. Oh, I was going to say, um, what I usually, I usually how I start is because I always like people who I'm talking with to introduce all your work and vice versa, just because sometimes we have different viewership. And I know you write these beautiful twists on folklore and uh, fairy tales. So why don't you tell me about some of your books? Because they're fascinating. Thank you. Well, uh, yeah, I'm uh, AP Beswick. So my name is Adam, though. Um, I write dark fantasy retellings um, inspired by British folklore. 
Um, I've got a, a few ideas about expanding that universe, taking folklore and mythology from other other areas of the world as well. Um, and I've also got a young adult uh, trilogy as well that I've, I've just finished this year. Also got a young adult uh, trilogy as well that I've, I've just finished this year. Um which is kind of in the mould of Harry Potter and his dark materials. So I decided to uh, make make the transition. To- and so far it's going really well. I love it. I love it. Do you have any of your books to show the covers with you right away? Because I, again, if you haven't seen, if anybody's watching right now and has not seen this man's covers, you should look them up because they are gorgeous. Thank you. Um, I've got the first book with me. Um, oh, yeah. It's obviously inverted, so it does look back to front. This is the first book in the series. Um, the next book is due to come out uh, end of this month. Um, my editor's just confirmed it. I'll get it back about the 19th of uh, May. So I've got a frantic 10, 11 days to to get it all formatted and finalised. So, But I'm always up for a challenge. <laughs> yes, because you... You work as a nurse, and why do I say Green Arrow? Robin Hood? Nearly. Robin Nearly. Hood, yeah. Okay, yeah, yes. That, that is so neat. Nearly. <laughs> yeah. So, like, for me, I thought yeah. this was so, that. Oh, sorry, continue. I didn't use, there's a little lag, and so I have to, no, like, sorry. yeah. <laughs> lag as well. <laughs> but, yes, I will let you go, go on, go on and tell about your book. Sorry. Right. I'll give I'll give a pause during this lag. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, this this one started because um, me and my wife were watching the latest Robin Hood film with Taron Egerton in, mm-hmm. and um, by the end of it, I was quite grumpy. Sorry, <laughs> so um, I was grumbling to my wife and said, "Well, I, I, I could write something better than this," and um, she just turned around to me and said, "Well, why don't you then?" Hey. I was like, right, I will. <laughs> so, so then, yeah, just kind of threw myself all in and started having <clears throat> had loads of ideas for what I, what I wanted to do for the story. And then it was about halfway. Well, it was about a quarter of the way through. I introduced a character, and I was like, it'd be pretty awesome this if I could introduce characters from other aspects of British folklore and mythology, and just have it as one big burst in in this new fantasy world. Um, and it all, t- it all tied in really well. So e- each story is its own kind of origin story, but it has characters crossing over from each book as well. That is very neat. No, I, I didn't understand. I didn't expect that because I know based on seeing, again, your covers, I could kind of guess where different um, lore comes from. But that is really neat trying to make them all interweave into one universe. Yeah. So, so, so the, the one, idea is of which one comes next? So the next one's a Blackbeard retelling. Ooh, I love that! I'm so excited. And you said that comes out in May. Yeah. Yes, and I'm currently writing the third book in the series, which is uh, Saint George and the Dragon. Um, which I can't really tell you the twist on my take on it because it'll give away something that happens in the next book. That is fine. I, I respect that, but that is very neat. So St. George, Blackbeard, and Robin Hood. Yes, and then book four is going to be King Arthur and Merlin. Ooh, I love a good King Arthur retelling. Yeah, and then because it's been a busy year, I've got a Father Christmas-inspired novella at the end of the year that's coming out as well. Um, So... It, Father Christmas of the Twist, because it's written for adults, and, and my version is a, is a, a bit of a monster hunter. Um, so uh, it's quite a good twist on the tale, but I've, I've, I've put in all the, the kind of things you come to expect with stories involving Father Christmas. That is very interesting, because I've heard from other authors who do dabble in kind of... Um, uh, holiday lore that it actually does really well when you get in the right season. So that's exciting. Yeah, so that that was the 
angle I wanted to go through, my idea is to have kind of seasonal books that I can market as in, in like individual stories. And if people enjoy it, that I've got a recognisable series through the covers and that you can spot the retellings from, from the covers. That was my initial initial idea. That is so cool. Um, so one of my questions for you was, what inspired you to then go, let's say, from obviously the Robin Hood came from your movie viewing. What made you want to pursue then Blackbeard as your next one? Um, <laughs> so Pirates of the Caribbean is like my favourite film ever. I think it's it's a masterpiece, the first one. Um, and I've always wanted to write a kind of pirate theme swashbuckling ad adventure. Um, and I thought, well, the, this could fit real tie in really well with this story world. Um, and that's where um, I had an idea for how to link a character that's based on St George that's in the first book that could then be in the second book as a part character, but that then would be the main character in the third book. So, um, yeah, it all just stemmed from a little... I'm, I'm, it's how my brain works. I'll, I'll have a fleeting idea and think that could work, and then I'll sit on it for a bit, and then before I know it, I've developed this plot in my head. And I think the twist at the end of uh, this next book is I can't see anyone seeing it coming. And I want it to surprise people, but hopefully not disappoint. But I think I've certainly gone for a different angle. Oh, yeah. Well, retellings are very popular right now. And actually, one of my series, uh, it's kind of the one down here. You can't really see in good. I have I have yeah. been out of power since 830 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So my lighting is very weird. But in my my new reverse poster because I do these things in reverse ways are kind of cool. Anywho, um, doing retellings, that series I have, The Guardian Speaker, is a retelling of a Nordic myth. So I kind of like, I love people who do retellings because for me, um, going from mythology base, it's just so much fun to have that core inspiration and then tweak it and reintroduce it to a modern viewpoint. Yeah. yeah. So... I'm loving your new backdrop. Back. I, saw you, I saw a video this morning. So well done for that. Thank you. Just because uh, it's just been my book so far. Do, do you want to go into a bit of detail about yourself and, and your books and your okay, series? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, so right now I am, I am an author who's been around for a couple years, but as I tell everybody, I did not know how to market or in find readers initially. So there were a number of years where I just kind of plateaued for a while, but since then have figured out, you know, means by let's TikTok and being able now to connect with other people and get my stuff out there. But because of that, I do have a number of books right now. I have three different series, one of which is my adult, uh, not adult, my new adult shifter fantasy it's a war-based fantasy set in a kingdom where both the shapeshifter race and the humans have to kind of put aside their differences to try to work together and fend off this oncoming evil. So that's a four book series. It was my debut and I've in love with it because it was just a great series to kind of get used to writing and learn the craft and um, just try things out. And then since then, I am trying to do what I do not advise, which is publish multiple series at once. <laughs> do not recommend it. But I have my young adult adventure fantasy. It's a portal fantasy set in a multiverse with 12 magical worlds. And that one, again, because I love mythology, I pull from mythos from all around the world and deal with the kind of the chosen hero archetype and how does that chosen hero if you are selected at a young age, how does that affect you as you grow and what kind of person do you become? So I have two books out of that one, and that's the Jed Chronicles, starting with the 12 task. And then, like I kind of mentioned, my mom. So I have two books out of that one, and that's the Jed Chronicles, starting with the 12 task. And then, like I kind of mentioned, my Norse uh, adult mythology series, uh, The Guardian Speaker. They're novellas, they're quick reads. I have five out, we'll soon release my sixth one, hopefully this month, Crossing Fingers. That is the game plan. And, um, but they're fun, they allow 
readers to explore the nine realms in and around Yggdrasil, the world tree. And um, though it's, yes, it's Nordic mythology, you will see Loki and Odin and all that stuff way, way, way down the way. Um, right now, I start with really obscure stuff and kind of weave my way in. I love Norse, Norse myth, mythology. No, it's it's there's, it's there's fun. There's so much to work with. Oh yes. <laughs> so yeah. for for Wait, you. So which which is your... Oh yeah, sorry. One I am working on right now. So for me, um, I was just wrapping up doing my first draft of the uh, tenth one of the Viking series. Though I'm about to publish the sixth one, so I'm always working well in advance of where I am. And I'm very impatient to release books for, so everybody can catch up to where I am. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's kind of what I'm finding with myself. I'm I'm, I'm always two about two books ahead, um, or two two stories ahead of, of where I've released up to. But this year's been my busiest year because I've released two books this year already. I've wow. got another one coming out next month. I'm hoping to have my St. George retelling out this year and my Father Christmas inspired one. And I've had an idea for a Halloween themed anthology of short stories. So I don't, yeah, I need, at some point I need to take a break. But um, I, I'm finding it quite fun um, having multiple pro projects going at once. It's, it's keeping me busy. Oh, yeah. So. For me, when I work on multiple projects, I'm editing one and going through, you know, formatting of another and writing the first draft. And it allows me to keep everything fresh and also helps because when I go back to something, it gives me almost that new eyes on a material that I written maybe months ago. So how is that for you working on different projects It's been a learning curve. So um, I think by the time I released my first book, I'd, I'd already written the, the second book. So my first book in my, my Spirit Beast series, um, which is Arnold Ethan and the Lines of Sarvo, um, when that came out, I'd, I'd literally went to my um, like my, my book launch party that we'd, I'd organised with my wife. Um, and I had the manuscript of the second book with me to show, show um, my editor. Um, so she was really excited because um, she took that home with her. So she she came and watched the launch of the first book, and I had the second, the first draft of the second book written. Um, and it was actually the second, the third book in the series. I wrote about fifty thousand words, and I, I just didn't like where the story was going, um, and ended up starting from scratch again, um, which was really difficult. And then I, I got a bit deflated with it. So that's when I, I wrote uh, Forest of Vanity and Valor. Um, because I thought, no, I need. I just, I had this new idea. I'd not written for a month or so because I was quite demotivated. Wrote this and then um, restarted the third Arnold Ethan story because, in my head, until I'd kind of finished that trilogy of books, I didn't want to do the readers that really enjoyed that series and supported me with them. I didn't want to do them a disservice, and I'd, so I kind of said to myself I wouldn't start oh that's already nice so oh, that's already nice to have that kind of groundwork set and it makes things go a lot quicker now you I think you've noted a couple times you have noted a couple times that you publish or you use Kickstarter to help you publish and I'm fascinated about that like how does that work I've heard authors doing it but I never knew the how and you're making it work and I want to I would love to learn more yeah so one of the things I found was uh, obviously I do this uh, you know when you're an indie publisher you, you put in all of your own money into it now I've got children a wife mm -hmm. and I don't think my wife would be happy if I if I put all of our savings into into publishing my books and um, so it's about trying to make things more economical so that it, it wasn't me bleeding loads of money, 15 pounds pledged um, of my goal. Uh, didn't really know what I was doing. Um, so I went away and did a lot of research. Um, so when I had uh, Forest of Vanity and Valor was written, I thought, right, I know more about it. I, I 
I need to prepare a lot a lot better than I had done. Make make the the kind of interface look a lot more professional and put a lot of time into that. Um so the my main outgoing was paying for the cover to be designed so I had something to help people visualise mm -hmm. what the series would look like. Um and just put a brief together, put put some uh kind of prizes, some tears, some um book swag as it were. Um, so like kind of signed art prints, um, signed copies of the book, ebook, being able to buy the entire series as they come out. So those that whether there's twenty books in the series or ten, the people that pledged for the ebook in the first Kickstarter will get every ebook that is released throughout the series that's without me. fail. And that's that's my way my way of saying, well that's for showing that's for showing the faith and what the, they've already and uh, and I, I thought, right, we need to do it for the. And I, I thought, right, we need to do it for the second, the second book. So I, I did a see a sorrow and scorn again. And I, I thought, right, we need to do it for the second, the second book. So I, I did a see a sorrow and scorn again, um, and put some quite quirky prizes on there this time. And and people just keep coming back and wanting it. So I'll be doing the same again for the next book in the series. Um, and it, it's I'm finding that people are liking the the kind of if you market stuff as like limited edition gifts that come with it, mm -hmm. they're they're happy to pay um, decent prices and 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 I do try and um, I don't necessarily make profit from it because I throw all the, everything that I make back into making the prizes. So for example, the um, the Sea of Sorrow and Scorn, I've had eight custom made Elvish pirate coins made um so obviously there's a, there's a lot of design and, and money goes into having those developed made mm -hmm. and, and sent out to me uh, so there was a couple of people that had, had paid for, have paid for them and with the leftovers i'm offering them as um giveaways for people that pre-order signed copies of my book um and i'll i'll just put them in randomly into people's packs so there'll be a few people getting a, a pretty cool pretty cool little coin in there that's got it says um yeah it's got a sea of sorrow and scorn etched onto the back um in elvish um which i think is pretty cool <laughs> that is so neat that is exciting yeah i remember seeing one of your videos with i think an example of the coin and i didn't know exactly how that all worked but that makes so much sense no that is very very neat I'll have to like pick, no, that is very, very neat. I'll have to like pick your brain going forward about that since yeah. I am curious about Kickstarter. Yeah, so it's for me, it, it, within the Kickstarter, it was there was a tier called Pieces of Eight. So people, it, and that was the top tier. So people that pay that, they get the signed copies of the books. Any books in the series that are already out, they get the coin, but they'll have a, there's a, like in, in a Forest of Vanity and Valor, there's a dedicated, um page for sh like basically um like a contribution page so in, in the forest and Va vanity and valor the dedication page is called the the merry men and women um and it's got the, the four people that paid for the top tier for, uh, the forest of vanity and valor and i'll do the same in each, each book so, so the next book it was the pieces of eight so my idea was i'd have these eight limited edition coins made um there's only a couple of them that people sold which is why i've got a few to give away um Covered the cost of having them made, and that that's all. That's all it's about. I want I want to make things that people look at and go, "Wow." That's pretty cool, and, and that, that's you know, made, and that that's all that's all it's about. I want I want to make things that people 
look at and go, wow, that's pretty cool. And, and that's, you know, a bit different from what everyone else is doing. It's quite, it's hard to stand out from the crowd. Um, so I've got some ideas as well. So, for example, the um, the King Arthur and Merlin one, the dedication page will be Knights of the Round Table. So everyone will get a kind of quirky knight name with, with people that, that back the highest tier on that. So yeah, that's that's my plan with with it, um, and I'll keep doing Kickstarters for each each book in the series. Again, that that's because people keep asking for them. Uh, well, that makes that makes so much sense. Now, let me ask you, in case any of my viewers want to know, where are your books, or where can they find your books? Because like, are you? I don't know if you're just on Amazon. If you're wide, I'm assuming you're wide, but I don't know. No, they're all on Amazon. At the moment, so yeah, um, I'm the tied into Kindle Unlimited, um, just because at the moment that that's I've got one book out in the series and and that's working really well. Um, I think I had forty forty five thousand page reads last month, mm -hmm. um, which for for a one book series is a yeah pretty good pretty good return on Kindle Unlimited, um, and I I might take the paperback wide, um, mm -hmm. but at the moment it's working on Amazon, so. Don't want to with how busy I am with work and writing. I don't. I don't. I don't necessarily have the time to to put to put it wide. But I have looked at options like Draft to Digital to to help me with that. Okay. Yeah. Right now, like I'm kind of with you. I am a Kindle Unlimited author, so my eBooks are only exclusive through Amazon. And at the moment, my hardcover and print are also only through Amazon, though. I've started to consider, so I'm trying to slip that in, so I'm trying to slip that in. I haven't tried audio before, crossing fingers that it works out. Do you have, do you want to go audio or do you have an audio book? Uh, I've literally after, I had a video that kind of took off um, the Easter weekend um, and I had a lot of people asking about audio books. So yes, I've now got, that's in development. Yay. Um, uh, there was a, a yeah, a, a narrator. Um, well, I had quite a few. I woke up to quite a few emails off narrators that had seen this this video on TikTok, um, asked if I was interested. So there was, there was one guy, um, Aaron Aaron Smith, who's who's doing the narration for me. Who um, um, he's not he's not. I think he's using TikTok more for finding things rather than trying to find an audience but he's looking to build an audience so yeah. i think i i've kind of really nice to work with someone who's also trying to build on their platform um really he's been brilliant cleaning the okay I have that, here. I have that <laughs> yeah sorry <laughs> excuse um, me so he's um a bit of a teaser which i'll be uploading in the next couple of days um, just to let people know, but it's 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 come about because people uh, supporting me by by buying the book, um, but also back through through people asking about it. It, it showed me there is a market. Um, so yeah, we agreed on a price, and and he then that's in development. So I, I can't wait. Hopefully, it'll be the end of this month. It will be ready. That is tremendously exciting. Tremendously exciting, and like mm. for me, I. I have never been a listener of audiobooks, so just trying to figure out who would be a good narrator was overwhelming for a moment because I didn't know what kind of voice people liked or anything. So that is really neat, you know, that anybody taking that step and going forward and transforming their book into audio because I was actually surprised about how many people only read through audio Maybe it's because they listen to it when they're driving to work. Or I actually had someone contact me because they're envision impaired and I never thought about it, but they're like, that is literally the only way I can read books is through audio. So it's really neat to be able to branch out into that medium. Just really looking forward to sharing that with everyone because it is the, it's quite literally the TikTok community that's, that's brought this into fruition, which is really exciting. Perfect. That is so exciting. Yeah, for me, I, I when I want to, I think probably later this year, I'll start trying to find a narrator for my Norse 
uh, novella series because I had a lot of people ask me recently about that. Of course, being a Nordic base um, series, I almost want to find someone who narrates that's in or from one of the Scandinavian countries so they can replicate, you know, the voices that well. But I I don't know where to begin with that one. So I'll have to take some time to look into that. But that is very neat that yours is going to represent your character so well. Yeah, and, and I think that's half that's half of the connection with the people that are listening is ha is having a a voice that that connects with the characters as well. Um, so the next book will be interesting because it's a uh, it's a male and female protagonist. So the next book will be interesting because it's a uh, it's a male and female protagonist. The protagonist. So um, then from their viewpoints, whereas it's two male protagonists in this book. Um, Kind of to and and throwing, who, to, which character is good, which character is evil. Um, so it'll be interesting doing the next book as well because obviously there'll, there'll be a split narration in, in that. Mm -hmm. No, that okay. So let me ask you because when I write my series, all my series are at current follow one character's point of view through all the books. Now you're writing a series where each book has different main characters so how is it for you to write all these different personas back to back to back yeah yeah it's difficult um it's difficult in the sense of getting into the mindset especially when so for example i was i've been writing the st george and the dragon retelling um so that sense is one of the main characters or um, and the the kind of one of the villains from the Forest of Odyssey and Valor, which is Morgana, um, and then suddenly I had to go back to editing a Sea of Sorrow and Scorn, so I had to quickly switch to my, the character's mindset. Um, and I think one, I just read a little, a couple of to get back into the to the fold of it. But they've all got different arcs, so they've all got different personality traits. I, I try and not make them one-dimensional so I, I try and make them as intriguing as possible um and i'm a mental health nurse so the there's you'll see those kind of themes within within the stories as well um within all pages you're faster mm. um so it trains your body of a, it's as, as it were to use it um and people suffer from addiction so the, the more you use it the more you want to use it the more your body punishes you when you aren't using it so i used my experience of pe supporting people with addiction to help kind of create what the what 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 the character in the sea of sorrow and scorn is physically going through every time she's forced to use magic and that's how her story starts off she she's not wanting to use the magic but she's backed into a corner but then it kind of shows her harrowing experiences afterwards as her body's kind of making her crave using the magic more to stop her feeling the pain that she feels um to kind of catch 22 the magic's doing good for her but and, of, and the people that she's with but doing bad for her in the the long run um someone's just commented saying that there's a lot of viking tiktokers um if you look under blacksmiths on tiktok um you'll find a norse voice there Oh, good to know. I'll have to look at that because I do know that there is a big Viking talk culture. I never thought about checking the blacksmith side of things, but that makes sense. Uh, there's a lot of people who like to re do reenactments, yeah. and that does make a lot of sense. And as you were saying um, about yeah. your series, um, about interweaving the psychology and the mental health, when I think anybody who dabbles in dark fantasy as you and I both do you need to take you know that into consideration because yeah there are a lot of hard things emotionally going on but you know there's also the psychological implications and it is kind of interesting I never thought about it of having an addiction style based magic system but how that would affect a character or characters yeah so yeah, without without giving up, well, it, it doesn't give away too much. But the the, the crux of the story, the the Blackbeard retelling, is they're looking for the Fountain of Youth. Um, but there's there's a bit of a spin on what that's actually used for and how that helps people. Um, 
So, yeah. So if you imagine how magic ages you, it, it's reversing the effects of magic use. So it could potentially be a very powerful tool for people to have in the in the in the kit. <laughs> Yes, actually, that is very true. You know, if if one of the big elements is quick aging, yeah, found of a youth, I would see that would be very popular to try to find. And that has tied in a lot with, I think, um, lore in and around uh, pirates of recent. And I don't know the true history of how that all came yeah. about. I think I do. I think I do, but I'm not positive. But there is definitely a connection with that mythology and tying in with uh, pirate lore. Yeah, I've just got the the poor reader saying hello. Um, now I th I'm sure the poor reader did a very nice do on TikTok about a forest of vanity and valor. So thank you very much for that. <laughs> I, rec I recognize your profile name. Yes, but um, okay. So let me ask you. <laughs> so what got you into TikTok in general? What made you decide? Let me jump on this platform. For me, I was very hesitant for a while, but now I actually really love it. So what made you decide, let me try this out for, you know, talking about your books? I was terrified, absolutely yeah. terrified. Um, I've always been on Instagram. Um, Instagram is stationary. I can just take pictures and put them up. Um, what I found on Facebook and Instagram is my, my pages were, were stagnating. That were people weren't seeing my content. Um, I had dedicated followers that interact with my posts, but I could have two, 2,000 followers and only 30 people see see my posts that I was putting out every day. Um, so I got quite disheartened with it. And I uh, got myself an accountability partner uh, by the name of Rob, Rob Radcliffe. Um, or oh, Robert Radcliffe. He, um, and we kind of push each other. Um, were different. Sorry, I've just got a couple of questions that have come oh, on. Yeah. I'll answer those in a moment. Um, yeah. So um, yeah, we we push each other to for word counts, for trying new things, for different marketing tactics and things like that. Um, so we uh, said, let, let's go for it. Let's let's both start off on TikTok. Um, see see how we can how we can build an audience and just kept feeding back to one another I, I got quite addicted to it quite quickly and was researching researching and, it, and it's like anything else the more you do it the easier it it becomes for you and the less the less awkward you feel um and literally in four months I've seen growth that I, I couldn't even begin to dream of um to the yeah to the point where in April I've I've made an income that would be was better than my salary um which i can't i don't think that'll happen every month but it's given me a taste of how how things could could be and can be um but it's given me a platform to carry on building this series and that's you know that's so inspiring for authors who are just beginning because the more you write and the more you put out you know the more essentially product you have the more you can essentially make as well so to be uh, the more you can essentially make as well so to be an author who's starting out with only a couple books so far and doing that well is fantastic and so i think that's one of the reasons why this platform is amazing i you know kind of like you i was hesitant for a while yeah. and it was it was it's overwhelming because of all the functions to start out with with this platform but once you learn it it's you know it gets easier you can streamline it like anything and um, you start building this great interactive community but you said you had a couple questions on your side uh yes yeah, just someone asking um with regards to the fountain of fountain of youth say they found it why do you think most immortals have such a disregard for the lives of others that's very deep. Um, I, th I think in this story world, everyone's got a, a blatant disregard for life and others. Um, the the fountain of youth, and with well, in this story world, as I said, it's more about um, 
enabling people to use magic without the side effects that everyone else suffers from. So that's why that's why it's valuable. Um, I, I don't know how to answer the rest of that question. <laughs> and what was okay? Can you repeat the question one more time? Let me see if I can. What was the what was the? Yeah. So he's asking. Um, in regards with the Fountain of Youth, say they found it, why do you think most immortals did? Um, in regards with the Fountain of Youth, say they found it, why do you think most immortals have such a disregard for the lives of others? Oh, interesting. Well, I know from the mythology um, point of view, it's interesting. Yeah, Sorry, what? I was saying from the mythology point of view. Uh, so, he, yeah, he's just asking how. Sorry, go. <laughs> so he's just asking how, how you go about working that angle. Hmm. Well, I mean, mythologies around the world, you will have deities that are immortal in many ways. And it's interesting, the ones that are quote unquote immortal, but can still be killed, they, I think they hold this reverence to life. And so, you know, the value of something like immortality in a form of whatever it is, some gods you have to incorporate and eat an apple every day to keep young or anything, they can value it. But yet having that temporary, I think, um, almost, uh, I'm trying to like figure out how to word it, but um, having all that power surge to the head and that confidence that can bring you that I... I am immortal and you are not. There is that power difference that can uh, develop into an oppressor and an oppressee. And so, you know, I don't know. I It's kind of interesting that once someone has a taste of power, be it true magic or just immortality, what that can do or transform someone's persona. And in many mythos, I think gods have that ego that goes with, I have power and I have immortality and disregard those who don't. Yeah, I think that's quite a really good angle to go with, to, how it could change someone. So you could have someone who potentially starts off quite well-meaning with mm -hmm. it and then walks over time because they have all this power. Yeah, the corruption of power. It is a, mm. it is a good theme and a very interesting theme and um, used in many different ways. <laughs> yeah, well, I, th I think you've certainly inspired us there, so thank you very much. <laughs> well again like i like i love mythology and so be it my norse mythology or even uh my series my uh asara's claws my shifter series and that one i actually developed a 12 god pantheon and so you have to get into the psyche of the concept of deities and what they do and how they view and interact with the mortal realm if they do so so it is kind of fun that way yeah Brilliant, brilliant. So what's your writing goals for the, for the rest of this year? Oh, my. Okay. <laughs> they keep changing because uh, this year is um, not going exactly as planned. But with that said, writing goals. Okay, so releasing the sixth novella this month. Um, I, because no my novellas are really short, sweet to the point, I have challenged myself over since last year, this year, and next year, at least, to try to publish four novellas and a four full-length book each year, I don't know, <laughs> each year, um, and get over that hump of just being able to have a nice um, plethora of options for readers to, you know, enjoy, and then hopefully slow down on my end. With that said, I'm also going to try, crossing fingers, to put out my first couple audiobooks. And um, I've been doing some box sets because now I have enough that uh, later this summer I'll finally put the Guardian Speaker in a printed box set because they've only been ebook. And I know a lot of people want their hands on physical versions. I prefer print books, anyways. So that's what I'm trying to get gear up and get them um, ready so you people can have. Need to do that as a Kickstarter. See, now, like I said, I have to now talk to you some more behind the scenes because I am really interested in this concept of doing a Kickstarter. And um, 
because if I don't have someone to talk to who knows what they're doing, I will probably back out. <laughs> it's that learning curve. And it just, again, you get so in your head about it and you just avoid it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But there's never been a better time with the, with the attention that, uh, you know, Brandon Sanderson's brought to it with the, with his uh, astronomical, I know it, I think he went well past a million pounds. Um, so I don't know what that converts to in, in dollars, um, but it, 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 absolutely amazing. The, the, it's a dual, dual sided. You could suddenly end up with it being oversaturated. So 60 days before you, you, you'll, you'll, that'll make sure on day one, you've got plenty of people um, back in you. I think you, you'll already have a reader base, so you, you, you're off to a really good, a really good platform. You've got TikTok. You've got you, you'll have your newsletter subscribers, the people that have already read your books, um, family, friends. You can reach out to everyone and anyone to start off with, just to get those initial pledges on day one, because that that's what I find is key: is is getting get trying to get as close to your target as you can on day one. And then the the Kickstarter algorithm just takes over and starts publish, uh, promoting it for you. That is so neat. Okay, yes, I will. But yeah, I'll, I can. I'll. So, yeah. Well, I was just going to say. So I'm yeah, I'm more than happy to to give you some pointers behind the scenes. Perfect. Thank you. Yes, I would love that, and truly, truly, truly appreciate that. But uh, that is so cool. That is really neat. So you also said you are you started off on Instagram, and um, that's a platform yes. that for me I can never figure it out as well as I want. Like like Twitter has been too. It, those both of those I've had a little trouble trying to figure out, and I think it's because Instagram. I'm not a good photographer, <laughs> and so the pretty picture thing. I just I missed the mark on that, and so I I've struggled with that side, but. TikTok's been easier for me, so I just enjoy this. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think for me, Instagram, it's worked because I, I started, what, I think I was about 10,000 words into my first book when I started using Instagram. So you can really see that progress of all that learning I've done and the development of the book from first draft through to having a cover design, through to looking for beta readers, arc readers, um, release day the second book the third book changing different software and trying to motivate and encourage other people to to do what i'm doing um it, it's really nice to look back on to see because you, you just literally chron chronicalized my, my journey from for the last five years um for me the problem i was having is it once it got to a certain level of followers i just kept getting messages saying you know, pay pay this to to boost your post and reach a wider audience, and it, it was, I just found it really frustrating that mm -hmm. uh, you know I think the it's three percent on average of your followers that see your content on Instagram and Facebook at the minute. Mm. Um, the the rest you have to pay to reach the rest of an audience that's already following you, so it doesn't really doesn't really work. But um. That's why I like TikTok because you have your followers that will see your posts and they'll engage. But every post that you do, you know, about ninety-five percent of people that see it aren't people that follow you. Very true. And at least for your post on TikTok, I love the music. Your music choice is like great on your videos. I, that's the kind of music I like to listen to. That epic sounding, you know, pulls you in kind of background and so I'll admit I think sometimes I borrow your music because I'm like oh you found something really cool <laughs> it's not borrowing it off me I've, I've used it from from uh, the people that have created the music of course, of course. yeah so I've, I had I had a it was the first video that took off um, I think I had about 20,000 views and it was uh, Mulan but like a rock a rock a metal version of it. It was like Peyton, um, I can't remember his then, name, but yeah. Yeah, Peyton Parish. Um so what I found is actually that metal music with Disney covers and dark fantasy retellings seems to really work. It connects with people. So I I do try and get words to songs that match up with what I'm trying to 
do. So I've got a few kind of metal shanties on my in, downloaded, ready to ready to use to to put with the second book. So I'm going. I'm look forward to putting them together. Well, I can't wait to see them because, again, I enjoy watching your videos. They are, they do pull you in, and um, it has inspired me so much. And I've, um, I put some of your books on my wish list because I was, I was sold on them. I was just like, I need to read that, so I'm putting it on my to read list, and so I will get to them when I can. I have a big to read list, but I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying. Well, uh I've got. Um, I've just had an order of books come. So if you if you send me your address after this, I'll send you a copy out. Oh, thank you. Well, if you want one of mine, I'll do that in return because that is really cool, and I would love to see what you think. And I would be again super excited to read one of yours. No, no, that sounds like a, a good idea. Book swap. Yay! I love it. Well, do you have any more questions for me? And why I'm asking this, because I know I set my timer wrong. So I don't know if it's going to kick me out at four and be like, you're supposed to be on your live. And I don't know how it's going to work. So I if it does, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, we've we've kind of covered a, a lot of the things that I had written down to ask you. Um I suppose what what's left is it like who who's your writing inspiration? Ooh. Okay, well that's tricky because I my genre of books that I like to read is ancient epic fantasy. So I'm the person who reads the old Icelandic sagas and stuff for fun. And I pull a lot of inspiration from that source material that uh, serves for a lot of mythology. So I can't really say a name of an author. Um, if I had to pick something a little more current, I do like authors who incorporate old mythology and do retelling it in new ways. So some of the big ones, you have Tolkien, you have J.R.R. Uh, Martin, um, Robert Jordan, some of these guys who do that kind of retelling and these giant epic fantasy sweeping books. So I do like them. How about you? Um, well, I've I've actually got a TikTok live with him next week. Um, wait, wait, it's an wait. author called Ben Galley. That's cool. Yeah. So, and he he um, the series that one of my favourite series is uh, again based on Norse mythology. Mm -hmm. So it's called the Aminesca series. If you wanna if you wanna give that a check, um, I will have to on Amazon because also see where the some of the inspiration for my covers comes from. That. Okay. Um, I think yeah. Uh, so I'm pr really fangirling um, because he uh, obviously behind the scenes his books have inspired my writing, but also watching how he does things has has kind of helped me along the way. Um, and I've, I've just reached out to him asking because I noticed he he was following me on on TikTok. So I re I thought why not I'll reach out to him and and he's he's happy to do a TikTok live next week. Wow, that is so neat. I'll have to try to check out on when it happens and see if I can jump on and listen live because that is fascinating. So if I think it's the 9th of May we agreed on. Okay. So, yeah, that about, I think it's Thursday, Thursday next week, Tuesday week. So, yeah, really looking forward to that. Um, but it's Norse no mythology, so that it sounds like it would be up your street. Oh yes, oh definitely. I and that's one thing. So I'm trying to read more modern pe modern authors' retellings and um, inspirations based off Norse mythology because I've read a lot of source material. But now I need to read a little bit more of the modern writers who write in my genre because it's one good to know know what your book kind of relates to and what audience is, but also it's just fun. Do you read a lot of retellings yeah, on your end? Um, no, not really. I've um, I've got a few books I'm reading at the minute. I've never done this before. I've got about three different books on the go. Um, I've never done, I've never read like that before. But I've been um, listening to audio books a lot because I've been doing a lot of driving recently with work. Um, so yeah, um, I've got an audio book. Um, 
yeah, I've um, been listening to an audio book and I've got uh, one of Rob Radcliffe's books. I've not got it to hand. He's um, uh, someone who I did a TikTok live with last week. So he's he's got a, dark, a fantasy series as well. Um, but he writes... Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, Aaron's just popped onto the feed. He, who's narrating the book? Hi, Aaron. Um, and then I've also got talent from Stephanie Dos Santos, who you did your live with last week. Oh, so, there's my power yeah, just came back on. He, That's a good sign. After, <laughs> yeah, at the time, um, I've. Um, my plan is to sit down this evening and have a good hour or so just reading and chilling rather than sitting, playing with my phone for an hour. And um, So I am going to put the phone down and, and stay away from it this evening. Yeah, it's good to find that balance between, you know, you enjoying reading and life versus just being on the phone and enjoying videos and swiping and stuff. So it is that nice to be able to put your yeah. phone away and enjoy. But yeah, well, thank you so, so much for being able to do this with me. I've been looking forward to this so much, and I am going to pick your brain more about Kickstarter stuff because um, I will definitely need help to, <laughs> to set this up this first time for sure. I'm, I'm more than happy to help. Um, and we'll, we'll have to do, do this again. Yes, please. And I'll be excited, especially when you have a couple more published and we can talk more about you know, get a little more in depth about your inspirations behind some of these upcoming works as well. And anybody on my end, again, check him out. His works are fantastic. And you have a website as well as I know you have uh, your TikTok has a link to your information on your end, right? Yeah, yeah, there's a, that's all the links to my books. Um, I do have a website, but um, it, it needs a really good update, so I, I won't send anyone to that. <laughs> okay, fair enough, fair enough. But yes, I... Go back, go back. On my end, yes, I have on my page, I have a link, and it sends um, kind of to one of my uh, links pages. But yeah, I have a website. I'm on all the different platforms. I don't... I'm not great at all of them, but I'm on all, I feel like the social media platforms and you can find me there. But yeah, and my books are on Amazon, just like yours. And yeah, exciting. So. Brilliant. Well, yeah, same, same everyone that's on my feed. If you're not already following Catherine, I definitely recommend it. There's uh, loads of really, really fun videos on there. Um, and your, your series, your covers stand out to me straight away. Like, see that on the backdrop that i have is that a television or a big poster behind you okay so this is my i recently did a poster and what i did because trying to do these live videos and they're always having the stuff inverted i actually created a inverted poster and just got that about a week ago so i've been excited to start using it for my videos but yeah i just I, I highly advise it for any author to do if you like having a background and then you don't always have to hold up a book and have like the title like that. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, no, the, the, honestly, the covers look brilliant. I, lo I love the shifter ones at the top. Thank you. Um, they, re they all really stand out, especially the green one. That's standing out more to me than any of the others. But I I'm biased. Uh, green's my favorite color, so the green one always kind of pops. Yes. But I so, will hopefully... Well, I don't know if that's because of uh, me, Rob. Sorry, what? No, I was just saying, I, I wonder if that's because my the first book in my series is a green cover. Oh, that that's true. Again, I, I'm attracted to that color, especially when it's that bright kind of thing. So, yes, not only did yours uh, pull me that way, but because Robin Hood, um, I love that storyline. So it's an inspiration in many ways to different things. And I used to be an archer, so I love stories about archers and mythos. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Back in the day. It's been a moment, but I used to I used to shoot competitively for a moment there. And my, my bow was green because oh, I had to have a green bow. <laughs> the video you need to do there. 
Ooh, it's been so long. It would look so bad. There are better archers here on TikTok that do some fancy shots. I'd be like, mm, trying to remember which way I aimed the arrow. You know, it's been a long time, but uh, one day maybe I'll brush it, brush it off and uh, get back into it. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, right. Well, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna need to get going now. But it, I've really had a good time tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, and I'm glad we figured all this out, and I can't wait to talk with you again. Yes, definitely. I'll see you later. <laughs> Bye. See you, everyone. Take care.